So when the, you have that kind of high stress moment of having to do a disaster recovery, yeah, it's better to have trained for it ahead of time and have documented that and definitely give a client a secure document somewhere that says, here's what his primary assets are. Here's what you need if everything were to go sideways. Hey, Bob WP here, and welcome to All Things WordPress and WooCommerce, a Do the Boo podcast show. Today's show is brought to you by GoDaddy e-commerce hosting solution for clients looking to start a shop or expand an existing site. And OmniSend, the email and SMS marketing plugin and CRM solution for WooCommerce. I'll tell you more about our sponsors later in the show, but let's welcome guest hosts Rob Cairns and Dan Noss as they dive into site security and what it means for the holidays and beyond. Everything from reliable hosting that can handle security and performance issues to all things security, including two-factor authentication, updating, vetting plugins, and even social engineering. So let's join Dan and Rob. Hey, everybody. I'm Rob Cairns over at Stunning Digital Marketing, if you don't know me. And we are pleased to do the Woo Show today. And we're going to talk all things WordPress, security, and WooCommerce. And I'm here with Dan Naus of Stellar WP. How are you today, Dan? Hey, very good, Rob. Nice to talk again. Again, yes. it's We've become very close friends very quickly in our hurries. <laughs> it's all good. So... I thought we'd jump right in and we talk about security going into the holiday season. And I think it's one of the things that people who run websites don't get, that hack attempts actually go up as the holidays come on. What do you think about that? Yeah, I boy, I don't know if I could quote some stats offhand to, to demonstrate that, but I personally experienced it and it's not the time you want it to happen, uh, especially with an e-commerce site where you're you're making a lot of business at that point or your clients. Yeah, I had an American Thanksgiving one year that was pretty well ruined by a hosting company that was severely compromised <laughs> long time ago. But it wasn't my fault, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> if you have things go down and yeah, it's just not what you want when you have things in the oven and people you don't want to you want to be on Unplugged, probably. Yeah. So let's talk hosting companies for a minute. Stellar WP, who you work for, is owned by Liquid Web, one of the big WordPress hosts. There's other good WordPress hosts. And I think you and I have talked about this offline, but it's worth mentioning on the podcast. Hosting companies need to be your partner in all of this, not your vendor. Do you have any thoughts around choosing a good host? Yeah. it's You'll know the difference between one you have a relationship with real people and and their support teams because you actually may get to talk to them. <laughs> but yeah, thinking them as a partner, especially for your business and any business you're doing and any businesses you're supporting. If you're a freelancer working with an agency, yeah, you want them to be doing the heavy lifting and things that have to happen on the that happen best on the server side. And a lot of that security, a lot of that's performance and working together well is a good thing. I think often at at times on less ideal hosts, you might find yourself working at odds with them. They're trying to clamp down resources and people install all kinds of things that maybe they aren't aware of the performance and security um, implications. And yeah, going into a big sales period in the holidays is, is definitely a time when you want all that squared away and working well. And as we're talking about performance, I think one of the things that comes in handy for big WooCommerce sites is, and any big site actually is hosts that variably adjust your resources based on performance. So some hosts do that automatically where if you get a, a big hit of sales one day, for example, they'll bump your resources up so your site doesn't go down. Isn't that an advantage a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. A good managed WordPress and managed e-commerce packages that will do that for you. That's why penalizing it. Most most de- decent hosts have realized why hurt your customers when they're doing their best. So yeah, extending those those resources when you need them as as uh, your capacity goes up. That's a a great resource to have. You're not going to get that on the old traditional 
shared hosting generally. So yeah, and just the kind of vigilance too. There was a there there's security issues that come up at the network level that you can't even they're not even on the scope of people working with WordPress sites. And that's what you rely on your server text to be on top of. And sometimes I look and I'll, something will come out like this HTTP2 is a pretty big vulnerability just in the standard for for that. And that's something Google and you know, Cloudflare has clamped down right away. You, you Nothing you can do about it unless you're running the network and the physical hardware. And I'll go and search our larger company Slack and see what's going on this server side. And invariably someone, a customer has asked and the um, a particular bug, something out there. And it's always reassuring to see that yeah, we, that doesn't affect us. We've, we're on top of that, or we, we never were open to that. You definitely, definitely need hosts who are working like that with you and ahead of you and all the stuff you don't even know or think about is being handled perfectly as perfectly as possible. A bit of a, a shameless plug for your employer, you've rebranded to Solid WP, the iTheme site. And Solid WP has one of the best security newsletters with vulnerabilities every week. They come out Wednesday. I would encourage anybody to get on that with newsletter. My go to, two of my big go to spots, three actually, is your newsletter, GoDaddy Security Newsletter, and Patch Stacks Newsletter. They're typically three spots I go. And between the three of you, you have a off exactly what's going on in the WordPress security space. I think last week, the newsletter was around 120 or 130 vulnerabilities. They seem high lately. Oh, yes. I think the friends, the, the hackers are a little busy. What do you think about that? Yeah, thanks for that. It's a, I, at this, I'm really interested in feedback from people who are, who are getting that newsletter because we're experimenting with changing that a bit. Yeah, I've spent most of my time at Stellar. Is, Stellar WP is a, about a dozen different WordPress product brands from LearnDash and GiveWP to what was formerly iThemes. And I've spent most of my time working with that transition to now Solid WP and our, our security and backup and site management product there. The weekly security vulnerability report is now... Primarily, it's data coming from from our partners at PatchDAC, who are really great and providing virtual patching if you're a solid security pro user. That's really the last seven days with a little lag, like the, the most recent stuff is restricted to pro users. If you're inside your security plugin or using PatchDAC, you can see the up to the minute closures of vulnerabilities. So we're usually looking at the last seven Monday to Monday, and then that will go out Wednesdays. And it this year, it's often, I think we've hit over th- around 300 sometimes. Yeah. So it's been a seven-day period. Yeah. And it's often around 100 or over 100, and it, it was again. This year, we're already double what we saw total for the previous year and the year before. So it's an unprecedented time for Many more disclosed vulnerabilities. I don't, at least we know about them. It's not a, it's not necessarily that they didn't exist at that rate before. But what's a little concerning is that in, in the WooCommerce ecosystem, there's been more, incrementally more. It's nice to see in, in like others, Elementor has been clamping down. There have been less going on. There, those are big add-on ecosystems. WooCommerce is, is a very secure supported platform, but there's so many extensions for it. Those have often been this year in the lists. And the other concerning trend is that I think at the beginning of the year, we started off with, at the time uh, vulnerabilities are disclosed, there's a patch, there's an existing fix, and you can upgrade for around, it was around 80%. And now it's fallen 50, sometimes in below 50%. So you may have 60 that have no patch when we announce when we announce that and 60 that do and what do you do then if there's not an immediate patch and you need to to take some action that's where our um, security plugin and patch stacks virtual patching little firewalls that blocks any attempts to exploit an actively exploited vulnerability that still doesn't have a official patch for so we're happy to have that and having used your security plugin for a long time with my clients, now, believe it or not, over 400 
in that space, it works really well. So I would tell anybody to look at the product. It's easy to configure. It's easy to set up. It, it does everything. So you don't have to run like a separate 2FA plugin for two-factor or stuff like that. It does it for you. I would encourage anybody in a WooCommerce site to set up two-factor authentication. Please, please do it now. And if you haven't done it, reach out to Dan or I and say, help, because you need two-factor. And and start with that and go from there. Yeah, and you can ease that in gently. If you've got an existing site with a lot of customers who have accounts they can log into, one of the nice features of, of solid security is that you can force them to change all their passwords now and turn on 2FA if you need to. Maybe you only want to do that for administrators. Maybe you only want to do that for the people with higher authority. You don't want to create friction for your regular customers, but you can make it an option. So when they come and log in, it will say, give them a little nudge and you could do this. You could set this up and secure your account. You've probably run into that. I've done that sometimes. And yeah, I use this a lot. I will, I'll make a note of that and then make sure my, my online e-commerce accounts are slightly more buttoned up than I would have otherwise if I hadn't gotten that opportunity. So that's a nice one there. And yeah, we just a few minutes ago rolled out new version release, little minor update for Solid Security Pro. And tomorrow the basic version will brush up a few features. And The other thing too is since Do The Woo has a big developers following, I would tell any developers that are using like main WP, which is an a self-managed management console, or which I use, or Manage WP, which is a GoDaddy product or any other products, please make sure that you have 2FA and a highly complex password set up on those console managements because once somebody gets into the console management, they have the keys to the entire jailhouse. And then the inmates start to run the asylum, and that's not a good situation, so to speak. Yeah, that's really a key <laughs> central hub. If you're running an agency or a bunch of clients that uh, you're managing from a central um, uh, control panel like that, the solid central is our integration for that. It's an really online SaaS and you can... Same idea. Yep. Definitely want to keep that secure and manage who's got access to it. Um, surprising. Um, sometimes teams, someone's not really watching who's minding the store and um, yeah, you periodically want to make sure that former team members and you, know, you whoever's an administrator at that level you know, should be vetted and um, taken care of there that, you know, who's using that. No question. And while you're talking about vetting the administrators, you should actually vet all your users. Let's stop this in WordPress where we give access to admin because a client asks and I'll share a very story. I had a client who insisted his intern get admin access. And I fought the client and the client said, I don't care. It's my website. Do it. And I made the client sign a, a document that said that the intern caused problems. He would be billable. The intern went into the site and read an article that said security plugins and backup plugins cause bloat. So what did he do? He removed solid backup. He removes solid security. He turned off 2FA by doing that. And within hours, not days, hours, some bot maliciously went in and found a back door into the website. And we need to start going back to the way enterprise does security. And that means if you work for a bank, you only get access to the accounts you need, et cetera. We need to do that in the WordPress space. Yeah, it's surprising at a lot of levels how tr trust is a, is a good thing. You need to verify people as well. And there's, yeah, there's a lot of liability there that should be thought through before before you give people privileges. And yeah, the principle of the least privilege is what we try to encourage. Thinking about that, if you use solid security, it's going to give you plenty of opportunities to create custom user groups and per, set up different policies that you can enforce. So Maybe you don't force the regular customers to use 2FA, but you nudge them about it for six months and then you send them an email saying, we're, after this point, we're going to require it, but you can set it up yourself at your own leisure within this window. Um, but your admins, um, do it now. You're, if you're going to 
setup account or you're already in there, you know, you can go, it'll tell you th this, this user doesn't have a strong password. Every time there's a scan, we're not just looking for um, insecure plugins or themes, but users that have a weak password, something suspicious about the nature of the way they've logged in. And yeah, you can individually examine the risk level with with users, and it certainly goes up if you have an admin user. Um, we temporarily give privileges to a to someone who needs to do some work from outside your team. They will, if you forget about that. Sometimes hosts will traditionally have a support account on your site or something of like that. You, not the I was never too comfortable with that, and would delete those pretty quickly. But solid security will allow you to create a automatically canceled admin account for cases like that where someone needs to only get in there to the to that level as an admin for a short period of time. Let's jump into backups for a sec, Dan, because this is what causes controversy all over the WordPress ecosystem. And I think you had sent me over the weekend before we recorded this, a text that basically was saying we should turn off all internal processes for optimal performance and backups was one of those things that was pointed out and identified as a process that is heavy. Some people believe you should do backups at the host level. Some people believe you should do it at the site level. You have a backup product called Solid Backup, which used to be Backup Buddy, which I adore, by the way. I should say that. Shameless plug. I do backups at both levels and say if the performance is too low, um, then I need to find another host. Where do you sit in that whole discussion? I guess it really depends on the particular case of the site and what you're trying to accomplish. A really complicated complex site with a lot of activity, a lot of customers, say it's an e-commerce site, anything of high value, you should have really good hosting and, and, the st and a standard for managed WordPress hosting. And, and most now would be that they're daily, at least daily snapshots, and maybe you could increase that. But you may have sales activity and things that are happening just up to the minute. And that requires something more, much more robust at the server level. You could also, you could do that with something like with solid backups. Also rolling out a new <laughs> release to improve that, we have solid stash is our kind of cloud-based option and backup method where you instead of running the whole archive all at once of your file system and your database, you can it will incrementally back things up as they change. So it's it's just looking at what's changed within WordPress now. So customer sale record of that changes and and then pushing that um, up to the cloud. So th those are um, getting, that's always been a trick. And, and it's a great product because it will work on almost any host. And this is a valuable thing to have if it's not provided by, by your hosting service. But maybe you want very specific fine-grained control over how your backups work, where they're sent. It's, the Stash Live is, is a particularly nice thing to, to have and working on making that more efficient is uh, going to focus now. So just release some performance improvements for that. Uh, I was writing about that yesterday and working on that a little bit this morning. So it's that those are really, they can be server intensive processes. It's a real trick to, to figure out how to make sure that everything's getting backed up and you're not missing anything. It isn't stalling, and you're you're also not compromising the overall server performance because there, there's so many backup pro so many processes working in the background. You, depending on what someone has installed, you might have several things going on at different schedules, and if that's if that's competing with the front end traffic, that's not good. So there's always a trade-off. And yeah, I don't know if you want to totally turn off, if I agree with that, completely turning off everything that uh, you might be better off with a headless type of site setup if you're that concerned about front-end traffic overwhelming overwhelming things. But uh, conventional WordPress setup, yeah, there's a trade-off. The more going on in the back end and the and admin, um, that isn't cached usually. And that's... 
that's putting more load on the processor memory and database and can compete with your front end traffic. So what I think you need to do is schedule your backups if you're going to do them at the site level for an off-peak time. So figure out when your low traffic time is and do it then, and then you don't impact. The other thing, and you and I have had this conversation offline, online, please test your backups before you need them because the backup is only as good as the ability to restore. I've seen it in my days in enterprise where people go to pull a backup tape and the tape is blank or not (laughs) complete. I've seen it happen. And these are companies that know better. There's a reason why banks and insurance companies and mortgage companies, investment companies all have what we call disaster recovery days to test their disaster recovery. And the agency should really do the same thing as test and more test. Yeah, ab- absolutely. There's so much that can go into a backup and it's a very unique thing. So a, a certain type of site may have complex backup requirements. There might be multiple WordPress sites that are packaged together multi-site network, or you have an extra set of directories that are, for some reason, you want to be included or are excluded. And maybe that changes over time and someone doesn't think to up, update. We no longer need to include this or we do. There's this whole other uh, other piece of software alongside Words, WordPress that oh, we forgot to include that in the archive. There's just so many scenarios and it's something that has to be thought about consciously well before you need it otherwise then you yeah then you realize oops we didn't plan for something or this wasn't configured properly or we're just not in practice we don't we're not quite sure how to how to recover so when you have that kind of high stress moment of having to do a disaster recovery yeah it's better to have trained for it ahead of time and have documented that and definitely give a client uh secure document somewhere that says, here's what his primary assets are. Here's what you need if everything were to go sideways. I I agree with you. Whether you're just starting to build that Woo shop for a client or looking to expand or scale an existing site, GoDaddy's e-commerce hosting solution is there for you and your projects. Expand a client store with access to thousands of extensions or scale big time with conversion tools, multiple staff accounts, an integrated POS, marketplace integrations, and discounted shipping rates, plus a lot more. And if you continue to manage your site or you hand it over to the client, a single dashboard gives powerful tools such as online sales tracking and easy auto sync for all the store's inventory across the entire site. Plus, software, plugins, and extensions will be kept up to date, and regression and other testing is done continually to avoid site breakage. With that all said, keep your client sites humming along with e commerce hosting from GoDaddy at GoDaddy.com. Whether you're a product or a site builder, OmniSend can help you with your customer or clients' email and SMS through their CRM solution for WooCommerce. Product builders can bring their plugins and SaaS to a new level for their customers by integrating with OmniSend. And for you developers and agencies, recommending them to your clients for managing their customer relationships is spot on because it gives them the right tool to build their email and SMS lists send targeted campaigns, create automation workflows, and track their results, all from within their WordPress dashboard. With over 100,000 e-commerce stores already on board, have your clients and your customers get started for free by simply having them search for the OmniSend plugin on WordPress.org. One of the good things that WordPress has done is we no longer do version updates in December. That started last year. Uh-huh. And <laughs> that's right. As we move towards Black Friday, Cyber Monday, the Christmas shopping season, all of us guys like me used to cringe. December would roll around the first week and we'd have a massive update. I would 
encourage people to try and do their updates long before Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and just let's stay away from your busy season because if something goes, it's going to go. Yeah. And that there's a very important human side to that. Hosting companies too, often I remember some have had articulated their policies on holidays. They tell you they have human employees too, who want to go home and travel and are doing all of that. So how many, they're in a 24 seven business. They're your partners. You, you trust them to be working all around. You know, there's, there's some degree of vigilance that in certain jobs and and roles like that, people are, are pulling maybe difficult hours and hazardous duty pay or something comes in or something. But knowing that, paying attention to that, what their holiday hours are, what the level of support is really important. And I like to see that when they do have a policy about it and they care about their employees enough that we're thinking intentionally about this. We're not all going to be here in the normal way, but here's how we're going to provide for that because it can be, things can go wrong at that point. I've spent many a holiday slaved over a server when I was in healthcare or over a workstation in the OR or doing that. So I appreciate it, employers who do that, because having been there and done that, it's not fun, let me tell you. (laughs) No, yeah, it's not what you want to be doing on holidays. But And I, I think that's just true around, across the board, not just Western end of year holidays. Not everyone's on the same calendar. Not everyone has the same, quite the same holiday thing. So I think you have to be a little mindful too of different audiences. And hopefully um, the more people who think that way about the people they're partnered with working in open source, there's, it's a global, it's a global project. And I'm I'm glad that they did that because there was a lot of stress coming down on, on people. On me. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> and, and everyone, yeah, even if you're just uh, going to run updates. So getting a version out and tested and then pushed out to everyone. And then we, you know, do we update now or do we wait until the new year? Or there's some security issues here. It was, yeah, kicking that down into the new year is is definitely a stress saver, I think. And by the way, before you do an update, please do a backup. <laughs> Like right before the update, people, I've seen so many agencies, they go in the main WP, they push the back, they push the update all button. Oh, I'm done. And then they start getting calls saying, oh, this plugin broke, this plugin broke. And and then they're into troubleshooting mode. Why not just take a snapshot back up ahead of time and save yourself that whole aggravation, really? So you, yeah, and you can roll back quickly if if something goes wrong or or do a test first if you can on a staging site and make sure things aren't going to to go wrong before you push that out. It's amazing how it works as you can get away with a lot of that a lot of the time maybe. But yeah, another useful case for having a, a backup plugin where you can take that archive before you, you change anything on that site and then bring it back. I Just a little rollback. I've used the rollback plugin for a long time and I think that's been I hope to see it eventually in core that's been improved where if you have a single, you have a single plugin update that goes wrong or you, for some reason you want to roll back to an earlier version, you can just do that internally. And, and- what I will say, kudos to your team, the solid backup is even better on tough Chrome job sites since the last couple of updates than it's ever been. And I've noticed that I've got some big sites I got some big sites, a managed WordPress host, different ones across the board that manage Chrome jobs differently and solid backup runs much better on those. So your team has done a really good job in cleaning up some stuff. So kudos to them. That's good to hear. That's been the focus. That's been the goal. Yeah, they're using the action scheduler. And actually the release just coming out now adds a little part, a little admin screen under the tools section where you can go and look at all the, it's not a, it's an alternative to cron and a more efficient way of doing tasks in the background that are, have to run at a different schedule. And anyway, you can go in there and look and see what's going on where if all the work that backup is, that backups is doing in the background for you and make sure it's working right. But it seems like it's gotten a lot of love lately and, and doing better than ever, but that's, yeah, it's, there's so many different hosting configurations. Yeah, cron jobs aren't accessible for a lot of site setups. So this is one way to, to get around that. 
What I thought also was touched on backups, we touched on host, we've touched on 2FA. We have to touch on plugins. And plugins can be the major pain in our backside, so to speak. We know that with the iThemes list. We also know a lot of developers and designers gear at them, don't clean up their plugin list very well. So the I've seen sites with 30 and 40 plugins. By the time I get them, they're already in trouble. And then it's like, what do I do here? And they leave stuff they're not using. They don't update stuff, which they need to do. And then they haven't figured out that deactivating a plugin is not the same as removing it and plugins are not used. We should just clean up the code base and get it out of there. Where do you sit on plugin hygiene? On how it how it uninstalls or just generally how you should manage that. Yeah. Yeah, there's never really been a, a strong standard for that. Usually you find that there's a, a lot of database tables left behind after you've uninstalled things. It's pretty rare, but some plugins when will give you a at least a setting somewhere to wipe out all, all its database tables. I think mo- the convention that's evolved is let's hope that they come back, they reactivate the plugin or they in- reinstall it, and then we'll still have their original settings in here and be less disruptive or I don't know why. They end up erring on the side of let's leave all the all the existing plugin data in, in the database. And that will slow things down considerably over over time if you have a, a bunch of tables that don't need to be there anymore or if they've used added to post meta or something. There are a couple of tool plugin tools that will help you hunt down orphaned database tables and remove them, which I, I've done it at many points, but they're that's a little dicey. You, you it's always hard to you're trying to identify what exactly here do I need or not, and it's not always that that clear, you might drop some tables that turn out to be critical. Always back up before doing that kind of thing. But I really wish there was a, a standard on when you click uninstall on on the plugin list. That right there, it gives you an option: drop all of this, all the t- custom tables that this plugin has created, if it, if it has created any, and identify those to you. Uh, you can make it a, a smart decision or hook into something that the developer provides so that you don't fail to export something you need. And then as we move forward, the other thing I would suggest and we really haven't talked about is use an uptime monitoring service and, and choose one. Jetpack's got one. There's Uptime Robot. There's several others. Like just, it, it's, they're not foolproof and they generate some of them false positives. We know that. But at least they give you an idea when sites are going up and down. Like I can always tell on my managed server, when my data center does the maintenance they say they're going to do for 30 seconds or does a reboot, because I see a whole pile of down sites and I see a whole pile of up sites. So do you something to let you know sites are up or down? It's a good idea. Yeah, that's a feature we have had baked into Solid Central for a long time. And I think there's some that's on the roadmap for adding to that and improving that. I've used a lot of different services for that. One I've been trying out lately is Better Stacks Uptime uh, Monitor. And uh, there's all different there's all different ones out there. Sometimes you want something that notifies multiple parties, gives a, provides an app or the kind of thing that you don't want buzzing off and sending you alerts over the holidays, but that's what it's for. <laughs> and then the last thing is... Um, and I know you talked about with Nathan Ingram on uh, Solid WP is don't use a malware scanner baked into WordPress because like we all know the way malware scanners work is even if you use one on a PC or a Mac that's in there, if it, if the PC or Mac is compromised, there's a good chance the malware scanner is compromised. I should tell everybody at risk as a bit of a security guy. I don't run a malware scanner on my Windows PC. So there you go, bring it on. Because I don't think they're a good idea. You need to run something outside of the ecosystem. And you and Nathan talked about that. Can you share a quick summary, some thoughts on that? Yeah, it's come to light and beyond any doubt that there are 
the malware now is sophisticated enough to see that you're running a security plugin like Solid Security or WordFence or, or something like that. And it, once if it's on there, it can identify that and defeat this, those scanners in a number of ways, uh, whitelist itself or neutralize your plugin, your security plugin, so it's not going to help you. So since that's already ineffective, it's you need to get ahead of that at the server level. Hosting level scanning is going to be helpful. And it's also, if that's happening further up the upstream and, and on the network, it's not going to um, compete with your server resources for your customers. So I don't know that people using plugins with just kind of virus-like scanner, malware scanner stuff in it understand that is coming at a big trade-off. If you have that running constantly or during business hours, it's competing with your, your main purpose for your site, which is to load for customers and, and whoever's visiting it. I would never use a, use those either. I think it's been a very long time Yeah, I, since I've had one on a PC or, or something like that too. It's just inherently insecure because it's if someone has gotten past your burglar alarm and they're in the house, you're you have no real con, you have you can have no confidence of any further alarms helping you. It's too close at that point. I love that analogy, and it, it's funny. And then the last thing people need to be really aware of. We've talked about all the WordPress mechanics. What do we do about security? What do we do about hosting? There is a human element, and there is a thing called social engineering. And being a bit of a a student, even though I play in this space, one of the guys that talks about a lot about social engineering in this space is the late legendary hacker, Kevin Mitnick. He wrote about a book called The Art of Deception about how to you pick up the phone and how you call a business owner and you convince them to give you their password and then they give you their password and then they wonder why two hours later the site's down or worse, there's pharma scan or Bitcoin spam going on that site, redirecting everything elsewhere. So we got to make sure we're aware of that as well. Absolutely. that I, I do know that the stats are up on that and that because of AI making it easy to be write fairly fluently in a language you may not know, you, yeah, you can't count on, on scams being low quality and invisible in that way. They can be very much more convincing now. I've seen stuff where just the graphics involved, faking a PayPal or, or some other official emails there. Rogers Communications in Canada, there's scams out there where hackers have uh, put Rogers logos right in the scam. Well, come on, guys. That's a particularly vulnerable one because I use, I am using Rogers now because I had Shaw and they bought Shaw. And that transition wasn't too awesome. Of, uh, last week, of my, uh, my so I hear. <laughs> internet went down. <laughs> yeah, you know, unfortunately, our CRA you know, is notorious for, yeah. There are um, systems like that that, Maybe your ISP is shady looking to be <laughs> to begin with. You're not too sure what's going on. That doesn't help. I really appreciate it when when you get those messages that say, we will never send you this. It will look like this. I think we need more of that going out. Um, we probably need to be aware with that with WordPress. This is what a legitimate WordPress core um, you know, update that looks like or... Um, that kind of thing. I actually, I, there's a, I have a nonprofit in Milwaukee that I've taken through a number of different CMSs, I think since 2006, and they're a housing related organization. And I've just done their web stuff for a, lo- a long time. So their team has grown and changed over time. And there, there's new people. I don't, I have solid security on there. And I sometimes hear from people I that are new on the team. There was someone I didn't recognize uh, I matched a name up with an admin user on here who had been added. I saw a call coming in and it said New Brunswick and it was actually New Jersey. And I thought, she's not in Canada. I was thinking it was, you know, this was coming from the Maritimes and left a message that was the recording was a little hard to hear and had English accent. And I was like, I was setting off these, this is, I don't know. And then checked her out on, on LinkedIn and like, yeah, okay. Yeah, and then made, got, 
matched up phone numbers and made sure I was talking to the right person because it was about domain access, control of domain registration, that kind of thing. And if you've freelanced or worked with managing domains for anyone for very long or even your own, there's some pretty sophisticated ones. They'll send paper out in the mail. Well, that happened. That's been going on for years where it's maybe even borderline legal uh, in the U.S. or something, where you're actually signing over your ownership of the domain and they act like it's a bill and that they're the registrar and they're not. But uh, getting hold of domain access is really sensitive. Anyone asks for that, I want to make sure nowadays that I know who this person is. We've double-checked it, someone else in the Oregon. Those one in the mail, I haven't seen one of those in a couple of years, but they are out there. And uh, that's a big deal. And that comes with this, that social reengineering. And the last topic I wanted to talk on the security side is form spam and Ford ha- form hacking. So I have to give a plug to my good friend, Mr. Mark Westgard. He's the founder over at WS Forms. It's the form package I use on multiple sites. And what I do is I set up, he has an interface with Cloudflare Turnstile. And one of the cool things with Cloudflare Turnstile is it stops a lot of the form spam, the form hacking, that kind of stuff. What do you think about – and I think it's a better end-user experience than going to a capture. Like, users dread captures. Have you ever sat with that stupid capture and tried to get it? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work very well. Yeah, there's – and it's the terrible on a phone. I don't know. The Google ones have all kinds of issues, and – I failed them many times, either because I can't see. I'm like at my you know, glasses, like uh, leaning over. <laughs> <laughs> Where is that part of the motorcycle or not? And it's dumb. And you're going, you end up doing two or three of those, or somehow it's not implemented. No captcha is great. I love that. There's a, it's a another acronym instead of it's a type of captcha, but it's. I think Cloudflare invented that term, no captcha. So I was really happy when when we implemented. Turnstile, Cloudflare Turnstile, has an option you can use on your site, on the login form and contact forms and things like that with solid security. And that's a really good pick. I think it will probably spread and work smart to put that in there because you don't even see it. There's a couple of options, but you can set this up where it's doing browser fingerprinting and other things like that. And just being smart enough, using AI, there's some machine learning going on in that. Way, way back at the beginning, I wasn't a big fan of Cloudflare. I found it difficult to use and bringing things down here and there. But they've gotten so sophisticated and useful in so many of their services. This is probably one of the better new ones because your users won't even see it if it's working at its intended way. You just do your normal login and it's identifying suspicious activity. So it will challenge bots and bad actors, but most people that will identify as, yeah, they're okay. We've seen them. No kidding. Before we wrap up, as we go into the Christmas shopping season coming up, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Christmas month, what would be your top three wins that a site owner could do today to make their site better security-wise going into the holiday season? Yeah, just don't, it may be a little too close now to make major changes. I wouldn't do that. You don't want to, don't want to commit to changing things that you haven't tested well too close to a critical period like that. So the sooner the better, but not any really major changes. But performance, I think is, is really the key here. And yeah, doing a plug-in audit, there is any, anything that really accesses the, the back end or makes those Ajax calls to the heart, heartbeat features where you're actually loading, loading the back end, making more, in, more intensive queries. Some plugins do that really poorly and inefficiently. There's, there's a number of guides. Kinsta has a good one on identifying that. I, WP Rocket has a, has a plugin actually for managing the the, it's a nice feature baked in, into WordPress quite for quite some time now where you're checking the, the heartbeat, keeping live sessions, and it can be used by developers a lot of different ways. And if you have too many plugins that are pinging that and potentially making database queries, loading, loading the back end, that can often be a source of 
slow down. So you should know what all your plugins are and what they're doing and how expensive they are in terms of query costs. If there's a if there's a page that is slow loading now when a lot of people are on it, it would be so much the worse. Load testing is a good thing to do early ahead of time before you have a, a big spike. So yeah, I, I see performance and security as, as pretty closely related because a poorly performing site is a down a, a da- site that's gone down, which the same end result is getting hacked, at least in the sense you're losing business if this is a if this is a commercial enterprise and or simply for your brand, going down is the common feature of failed performances uh, as well as security. I'd weigh those two things together and not run back-end processes that don't need to be like the malware scanner we talked about. And don't hang around in the admin <laughs> <laughs> if you're running WooCommerce. Yeah, you don't just, if, if everything is well-tested and performant and, and running well, just let it run business over the holidays, get your, you're getting notifications elsewhere, or checking through the app. But the offloading as much as possible from WooCommerce to maybe a shipping platform, things like that. The less that, that your, your server has to do, the better, really. So I would agree with that. If somebody wants to get a hold of you, Dan, to talk about your work at Stellar or anything else, how's the best way to find you? Yeah, I've, I'm Dan underscore K-N-A-U-S Knauset on Twitter still, I, or whatever you want to call it, but I don't know how much longer that's going to hang on, but I've really loved the WordPress community there for a long time. I'm using Bob. I'm using LinkedIn more with for myself and also getting our uh, solid WP company pages going. I interact with people there a lot. If that works for you, it's often a good place to talk about deeper things in security. And, uh, and you just email me too, Dan at, I still have an uh, at ithemes.com address. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm always happy to, to chat with customers. And yeah, I'm really interested in what kind of feedback we might have from anyone who's subscribing to the weekly vulnerability email. We made some changes to it that got some, anyway, we get negative feedback. We had a little bug where we, our table of contents was out for a week or so. And it lets, that's where you just skim and look at the ones you want and skip down. So it was a huge time saver and had to unfortunately have that out for a week and people noticed. So I was glad they're reading that they care that much. And Brought that back, of course, but we'd like to bring more like trend analysis into it. And maybe we'll always have that posted on the site each week, but the newsletter maybe bring in some more content and, and talk about security trends and, and other things. But what would be most useful to our, our readers is a question I've had for a while. And I'd love to hear from anyone who has thoughts on that. Awesome. And I'm Rob Karens. You can find me at Rob Karens on X, formerly Twitter, LinkedIn as well. I co-manage the WordPress Global Product Community Group. Come join us. There's over 10,000 WordPressers in that group now. And and say hello. Rob Cairns here for Dan Naus. Thank you very much for joining us. And thank you to Bob Dunn, Bob WP, for having us. Have an amazing day, everybody. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Rob. Now that you've had your latest security lesson handed to you by Dan and Rob, watch for next week's show when we have a special guest come in on Emerging Tech and Talk Pass Keys. Until then, I want to thank Dan and Rob for dropping in and sharing their knowledge and insights, which are much appreciated. Also, thanks to our sponsors, GoDaddy and OmniSend, for their continued support of all things Do The Woo. Take care, stay secure, and we'll catch you the next time. <laughs>